Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Ultimate Manifestation Podcast. I'm your host, Reverend Sean Robert Grant, a.k.a. Sean Robert Grant. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. My brain just stopped for a moment, and I'm like, okay, what else do I say? Um, anyway, that happens. And like I said, I'm on this new authenticity kick where, not kick, but way of life where you just let things happen. You know, um, I was wondering, you know, you listen to different podcasts and you, and you, you begin to see how people edit and how they piece these together and add music in and stuff like that. And I, and at one point I was like, you know what, maybe I should do that. Maybe that's something that I should, you know, start to take part in. And then I thought about it again. I was like, you know what, that's not me. I want you to have me as authentic as possible. And if you enjoy listening to it, great. If not, that's okay too. That's great as well. But I think we should just allow whatever comes up to come up and to come out. And, you know, I think there's, there's, there's a magic to that, to where it's not rehearsed or, you know, cut this, cut that, take this out, take that out, put that in, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm happy that that happened and I can share it with you because, you know, it's, it's just, it's authentic. It's sincere. It's genuine. So, um, with that being said, if you have any feedback, any comments, it's the morning. I'm like, okay, what's coming next? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any correspondence whatsoever, please write to us at S H A U N G zero four at gmail.com. A huge thank you to all of you listening in across the globe. Very appreciative. Very thankful that you're taking the time to not only listen, but to download and to share these episodes as well. It's very, 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 um, appreciated by me and everybody involved with this. So thank you in advance, guys. Let's get into today's episode. We're talking about, as always, at the manifestation, the ultimate manifestation podcast, manifesting your dreams, manifesting your dream life. And so I'm going to tell you, this is, this is a lot easier than you would think. Well, let's rephrase that. It's a lot simpler than you think. And the reason why I say simple as opposed to easy, because the concept of it is simple to grasp. Now, it's not always easy because of the conditioning we've had. But when we begin to take um, take our power back and really start to release and let go of that conditioning and those beliefs and limitations that we're going to talk about today, what can happen is you find every single thing unfolds perfectly, easily, and in just astounding divine perfection. It's, it's just absolutely remarkable to see that come full circle um, as it relates to manifesting our dreams. You know, what this podcast is really and utterly truly all about. So, I've said this before on the money cure. I think I've mentioned it on the actors area um, and also on the love your vibe podcast, which are all my podcasts, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever said it here before. And what I'm going to say is we are often taught in life to accumulate. Okay. We're often taught in life to accumulate and to develop a consciousness that can attract all these amazing things in our life. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. But at the same time, you'll find you have a tougher time manifesting it. You have a tougher time manifesting it when you have these old limiting limitations, beliefs, conditioning, thought patterns that sort of block you from stepping into the truth of the dreams that you want to see realized in your life. So once again, we accumulate. So we, all of a sudden we say, okay, I want this type of house. So instead of letting go of the beliefs that I could never get that house, we start piling on, piling on top of that belief 
And then what happens? We get a little bit of progress, but then all of a sudden something pops up that shows us why we can't get that house because that underlying belief is so strong. It continues to work in our life, right? So what I would recommend and strongly advise is if you see something you want to manifest in your life, if you see something that is in straight, definite, pure, divine alignment with you and you want to manifest it, what I would recommend once again, say that twice (laughs) is what is standing in my way of manifesting this into my life? What could be a potential obstacle? What could potentially hold me back from getting this thing, from realizing this thing, from manifesting this thing that is so significant. It's so integral of a question. It's of great eminence that you ask these questions because that way you don't get a full head of steam and you're rolling and you're doing great. And then you get to the point where you should be able to walk through that door. But then what happens? You hit a brick wall, right? Because you can only manifest, right? You can only manifest according to what's in your mind, what's in your consciousness, what's in your subconscious mind. If there is a block, there's a mental block, that mental block is going to create a form in the physical material world, and it's going to block you from getting what you choose to get. So you have to, well, you don't have to, I politely advise you, (laughs) strongly advise you to really knock out the stuff that could take you down. Okay. Give you an experience of this in my own life. And how often it happened before I really began to realize what was blocking me. So I had this, this dream when, when, when I was younger growing up, it wasn't that I was like poor or impoverished or anything. I might've been impoverished, you know, mentally and emotionally, but you know, I always had, you know, the basic necessities, but it wasn't like, we were super well off or anything like that. It it just, you know, not that I, I, I recall. So as I got older, one of the biggest objectives for me was to manifest a lot of money to manifest, you know, being rich. And so I realized in the beginning, and this was in my early twenties, every time I got to that point, Right. Let's say, you know, because at the time I was working a regular job, a nine to five. And once it looked like I was about to get to that space where I was going to get that promotion and it was going to change the scope of my financial life. Something would always come up. Right. That mental block would always come up. Right. And it would come up at the very time where I was just on the cusp of achieving, you know, what I thought at the time was financial freedom and I could never get to it. And so this is, this is about the time I really, really got into metaphysics and spirituality and self-realization and self-improvement. And I began to see I'm blocking my own self. So when I uncovered every single thing, right, what I got down to the bottom of the bottom of it all was, I was only comfortable with a certain amount of money. And if I ever got to a space where I would get higher than that amount of money, I would sabotage myself or something would sabotage me. And, you know, it was painful to say the least, but it was also eye opening and and it created a great sense of awareness to help me to understand that. Okay. If I'm going to realize, you know, what it is that I want for my life, I've got to see what's holding me back. I've got to see underneath it all, what type of conditioning and beliefs I have to let go. So I went on a tangent and I just started letting stuff go. I just started journaling and journaling is one of the greatest things you can do because sometimes you can't, 
we can't always say what it is that we feel. We can't always um, articulate it as perfect as possible unless we have a, a notebook with a sheet of paper and a pen where we are completely uninhibited to say what we want to say and say it truthfully. And so you'd be just abundantly surprised as to what comes out on those pages that's coming from your inner child, that's coming from your subconscious, that's coming from, you know, a place of awareness within you that you hadn't noticed. And it, it frees you in a sense, it frees up so many different things. And so yeah, I was doing about a month or so ago here, I was really diving into these inner child exercises and there's these things called the inner child promptings. And it's basically just questions you ask yourself, your inner child, um, while journaling and you see what comes up and you just allow what comes up to come up. Because the thing is you can trust your subconscious mind to always answer, to always come up with the very thing that needs to come up that you're, you're prompting it for. Right. And so one of them that I thought was really good was why am I not good enough? Right. Why do I feel like I'm not good enough? And then you say, I feel like I'm not good enough because in the subconscious mind comes up with these, these, these feelings, these ideas, these beliefs, these emotions. And then once they come up, you kind of break them apart to see where they originated from. And then once you find the origin story, you can let go of them. And I'll tell you what happens one of the greatest aspects of manifestation is not what happens on the outside. It's what happens when you shift from the inside, right? When you shift yourself within the, the magic that happens, the, the feeling, the state of being, the consciousness that you get, that you get to experience from doing that is one of the greatest feelings in the world. And then you see the physical manifestation happen. But from experience alone, that is just unspeakable. What happens when you finally shift out of a money block or you finally shift out of a, a, a career block or a relationship block or even a spiritual block? You know, you find sometimes you have with, with religion and stuff like that. Um, it's a powerful thing. It's a really powerful thing. So it's important to really dive into these. Now, in most cases, a lot of us don't really know how to dive in to dealing with these emotions. And there's a couple things here I'm going to share with you um, that allow you to let go of your limiting beliefs. So obviously, well, not obviously, because sometimes it's not always obvious, but meditation is probably the most popular and what meditation does, true meditation, and I'm going to show you how to do this. When you meditate, you sit down and you go in without any possible objectives at all. Okay. In order for meditation to be effective, meditation has to be you sitting down, just allowing the divine essence to come through you. That's, that's, that's what it has to be. OK, it has to be no objectives, no agendas, no trying to get anything, but allowing the lower material self to dissolve, so to speak, and then allowing the infinite divine self to rise up. And so that rising up, the reason why it's calling right call rising up is because the awareness of the divine self becomes more conscious to you. And you can begin to see these things that do not serve you. So there's been times where I've been meditating and the idea of something that was just standing in my way would literally manifest itself as a thought, as a feeling, as an intuitive nudge. And I'd be like, oh, my God, that's the thing that I've been struggling with. And I would have it right then and there. And as soon as I became aware of it, I could clear it. I could release it. Right. Because a lot of times, all the time, actually, when you become aware of something from that point on, there's no more. Um, there's no more of it affecting your life. 
you've you've become aware and then you can just let it go. You can choose not to operate it by anymore. But when these things are blind and they're beneath your your awareness level, that's when they start to wreak havoc in a sense. But meditation is a great um, option to sort of dive into this. Now, once again, you, you have to. And, and like I said, this is I say you have to, but it's a strong advi- advisory, a strong recommendation of go into it without an agenda. If you go into meditation without an agenda, what's going to happen is you're going to find that your higher self will come forth and it will bring forth everything you need to know in that moment, plain and simple. Okay. But you can't go into it with an agenda. You can't go into it seeking knowledge. That's, that's the thing with the universe. The moment you need something, it's going to move away from you. The moment you say, you know what, I'm going to be open, receptive and present and allow whatever needs to come to me to come to me. Everything in the multiverse will come to you no matter what it is. If you take that attitude into what you're doing, right? As far as meditation goes and then in everything, never seek, never need, never clamor and force and attach yourself to anything. Allow it to come up. All right. So meditation is one way of, of clearing these, um, these limiting beliefs and limitations and conditioning and stuff. Another way that I like that, you know, some people know about, but not everybody knows about. is EFT emotional freedom tapping. And so the beauty with emotional freedom tapping is I would say 20, 25 years ago, you would have to go into, you know, a practitioner's office in order to do this. But because YouTube has become such a, just this giant (laughs) of a, uh, of a, a media service, you can find, a multitude of practitioners that practice um, EFT. One of my favorites is uh, is Brad Yates, and um, it's just amazing because you know he's very clear with the the prompts and the commands he uses, and he gives you time to tap along with him. And the man has done so many different videos, and these are valuable videos that are given to you for free on YouTube. So these are very helpful in a sense that they, they allow you to, um, clear any type of energy or emotion that may be stagnant within your unconscious, your subconscious mind. So that's another way to, to really bring up stuff that's locked away. Cause what happens is, is we inherit these emotions, these feelings, these beliefs, these, con- these these limitations as kids, and then they get locked away into our nervous system. And so they become a part of our energy, right? So um, I forget the name of that, that I think it's called a Cassian photo. I, I'm not sure what that is. If, if you guys know, you can comment, but I think you know what I mean. It's where basically the picture takes, the camera takes a picture of your entire aura. And you can see certain areas of people's aura either really bright and full of light and color. And then sometimes it's like dark and, you know, maybe grayish kind of looks like a storm a bit. But what happens is a lot of times that's just those those limiting beliefs and conditioning that are caught within the energy field because you take this on and then it develops into your energy field. So it affects every single thing that you do. What EFT does is EFT clears that out through allowing you to tap on a number of points, right? So um, I won't go into it because I'm not necessarily an expert on it, but I I recommend just put in emotional freedom tapping to YouTube or put in Brad Yates, Y-A-T-E-S on YouTube, and you can see how this works. And it's very easy to do. And a lot of times, you know, you (laughs) It's it's super beneficial how good you can feel after the fact of doing just a, a, a tapping session for just a few minutes. OK, so that's just a couple things. Ultimately, what I would tell you when it comes down to this, as far as clearing goes, do what works for you. Those were only two options, but there's so many options out there. Do what aligns with your soul. 
the, 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 the biggest issue we have with society today is that people will tell you to do what works for them, but they won't encourage you to do what intuitively works for you. And I want to really, really drive that home because this is how you succeed. This is how you manifest your dream life. You find what works for you. Now, it's good to hear other people's experiences. It's good to hear ideas that they might have that you can implement in your journey. But at the same time, everybody's different, right? We're all the same at the core being one made in the image and likeness of God in the universe. But at the same time, we're all having individually different experiences where we need to do what our heart, our own heart calls to do. Okay. So just make sure you're aligning yourself and you're being genuine and authentic to that because that's how you really are going to, to, to do some amazing stuff as far as manifestation goes is when you learn your own energy signature and you learn what your soul not necessarily needs, but what your soul requires for you to be your best. All right. So in wrapping this up, what I will say is whatever goals you have, write them down, right? See if they really align with you. See if they really are in this space of complete and utter truth for your heart, for your soul being. Okay. And once you know that, then get into the idea of what could potentially stop me. Now, sometimes nothing at all will come up and it will manifest so quickly. You'll be like, wow, that was just like lightning speed. And that's ha that happens. But oftentimes if it's something we hadn't had access to throughout the course of our lives, it means that we're in a lot of ways being blocked from it by our thought patterns, our conditioning and our beliefs and the limitations that we have. So get to that place where you say, what could potentially hold me back from manifesting this? What could potentially hold me back from, from, uh, realizing this, what obstacles could be in my way, um, from me achieving this in my life. And, and these are just, they're really amazing questions because they get down to the nitty gritty as to what could step in your way. And then once you find out what steps in your way, you clear it. And once you clear it, you'll feel the shift within first. And like I said, that's one of the most beautiful things ever. You'll feel that shift within first and foremost. And then from there, okay, from there after the shift is created within, be patient. Allow it to manifest on the outside. Allow it to manifest in the material world. And that will give you whatever it is you're looking to manifest that contributes to you living your dream life. You, you just, you just gotta be patient, be patient with the universe, allow the universe to bring it to you. Once again, that, that, that integral concept of we never want to reach and need and, and, and have to have something. We just want to allow it to come into our existence. Yes. We're desiring it. Yes. We feel like, it's a big part of our lives, but we want the universe to deliver it as opposed to us trying to go and grab and choke hold it and pushing and clamoring and fighting and all this stuff. Allow it to manifest into your life with ease, with effortlessness and perfection, which is the, the way of the subconscious mind. And you will undoubtedly get what it is that you are desiring to manifest. It's just. It's simple, not always easy, but it can be easy if you train yourself to make it. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been an absolutely wonderful, wonderful time with this episode. Um, as always, feel free to share it with anybody who you feel that can benefit from it. We are available on eight different platforms for podcasting as well as YouTube and all that other great stuff. Um, yeah, with that being said, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, please write to us at S H A U N G zero four at gmail.com. And we will get back to you as soon as we can. Other than that, have a wonderful day, night, evening, wherever you are. And we will talk soon. Thanks so much. Take care.